Ah, the much maligned Munty. You know what they say? All good things come in small packages. And this is exactly what that is. We all know it's a pest, an invasive species. But the one good thing it's got going for it is it's incredibly tasty. We can save the environment one venison steak at a time. So the first thing I want to do with this before we start, I just want to get it on the scales. If you're a stalker, huntsman, huntswoman, you'll know these aren't very big. Uh, but you'll be surprised what we can get off it with just a little bit of knowledge. And I will show you that. But first of all, I just like to weigh him. Then we get the camera down and get going. Who doesn't love a little Monty? So that little fella then weighed 16 pounds. So I guess we better get started. So I prefer mine neck or head shot if possible, just to protect the carcass. So this is absolutely perfect for me. So what I want to do then, is break this down into its primals of its shoulders, the saddle and the horn. So we bring the camera down and we can get a better close up. First, we're gonna take these shoulders off a natural seam. You could pretty much get your your hand in, as you can see there. Now the shoulder on something like a Munty, very small, predominantly goes for mince or stew, so you haven't got to be too fussy. As you can see, I'm just opening it up. It doesn't take a lot of work. Just catch that blade bone. And that gives us our two shoulders. Next, I'm going to take these haunches off. What I'm going to do is just open that breast up just to expose those lovely little fillets in there. So they end up in the leg when we go about there. And then just with your knife, one side of the backbone, the vertebrae, just gently cut. Now these pretty much pull out, so you're just helping it on its way. We have one, very small, but perfectly formed. So next we want to take these haunches off where it comes up from the tail, the first vertebra there. We go to the second one. Just feel for it with the tip of your knife. Just mark it. Get our meat saw. through the bone when it changes pitch change to the knife and there we have our haunch our saddle with the bit of the neck still on the neck end two fillets two shoulders right then onto the shoulders we got that front shank obviously here is the shoulder blade the scapula I'm just going to cut away any blood meat I don't want. Take this front shank off. It could be quite tricky this. So if you find it difficult, just use a saw. Won't make no difference because it's all going into the trim pile. So a tiny little Chin or hock just with the point of your knife if 
following the bone either side can be quite fiddly as you can imagine it's not the biggest creature to work on but at the end of the day don't be too fussy here it is all trim So working our way each side of this shoulder blade, again another odd shape bone, it's almost like a little paddle. Well, I've gone through that ball and socket there so we can complete the cut all the way through. We've loosened either side of that scapula. Now here is the ridge, if you can hear that, that sits in the middle and either side you get these muscles so nice and gentle knife in you can almost see where that bone is so down and then almost your knife horizontal as you can see comes off really easily nice sharp knife and that is the shoulder blade gone and then basically here what would be the upper arm again nice and simple nice straight bone to get out always just using the tip of your knife it may look like all the knives going in, but I'm only ever using that tip when I'm boning out. And that gives us all that. So we repeat with the other one. Another way you can do it is just hold them meat and basically just what I like to call shave the meat off. But I don't want to keep repeating myself, but you really haven't got to worry about being so clinical with this shoulder. Because it is all going through the mincer, sausages, burgers. So again, we come to the shoulder blade. And like before, just expose it. Again, you can just see I'm just using the tip of my knife there. I cut up a big red yearling and the size of the shoulder blade you could have paddled a canoe with it so just again through that ball and socket off over you can feel for that hard ridge you can hear it so knife point in follow it knife horizontal and just continue the cut to where you loosened it and then repeat with the other side nice and simple take your time no rush at the end of the day what i tell a lot of people is everything can be remedied you haven't got to worry about it Especially if it's your first time. The main thing is you have a go. So again. Either side of that bone. And there we have. Our two shoulders. Ready to process. Which we'll come back to. I like to build up a pile of trim and then we can go through it after, decide what we want for stew, which is cubed, diced, and then the rest for the mince for amazing venison sausages. My beloved vintage kit. You can never have enough bowls in your life. Goes over there, 
Okay, onto the haunches then. If you stand your haunches up, just a nice straight natural line between the legs. Get your saw. Now if you haven't got a meat saw, just get yourself a hacksaw, but a nice clean blade, obviously. And what we're doing is just cutting through part of that pelvis. And then we're following on down straight through the tail. Get rid of that. And that gives us two haunches to play with. Right. So if we look here, I love this little shank. Not quite big enough for one if you wanted to do a lovely braised shank but we'll take them off anyway to show you there's like a natural bend you can just feel it in there get your knife in nice and straight give it a wiggle so again with this one you could search for it there And across and join it there's two lovely little shanks but like I say a bit small so through the Achilles I should take these off the bone and make them into burgers I mean I've just made one of the best venison sausages I've ever made venison and chilli so when I see things like this now I think oh standing over it for three hours in a pot or sausages in a pan it's a win-win so again just stripping this off this bone you can pretty much see the structure there's that one muscle that side give my blade a quick sharpen and then there's one this side or you could just go in what we like to call a slash job and just get it off any way you like just keep your hands out of the way but that's those lovely little shins into the pile so next up are these dinky little haunches. Now several things we can do with these. Obviously they ain't the biggest and it all depends what you want to do with them. You could take just the pelvic bone out and leave them as a haunch roast or we could take the pelvic bone out, split the muscles, maybe stake some of them and have some as a mini roasting joint or if you eat lots of curries or kebabs or things like that, stews, casseroles, you could dice it it would be absolutely perfect so what i'm going to do first of all is take this pelvic bone out quite an odd shaped bone actually the hip bone or as we call it in the trade the h bone so it's got a ball and socket in here which i'll just expose the tip of that femur the thigh bone basically again just with the tip of your knife and with your other hand pull it away like I say I keep repeating myself but don't panic it will all come good if you go too deep anything like that not to worry so repeat with the other side it's a very shoddy split, Scott. <laughs> Talking to myself. So again, we've exposed that ball on the socket. Just cut through the cartilage. If you see the way I'm holding my life, it's more like a 
a dagger just get the point on trace the bone round and voila comes off just like that take that bit of fat off take the vessel off and any blood meat and we're left with these now so what I'm thinking is the tip of that thigh bone we're just going to cut through and that gives us what is basically the rump steak so you could get two nice steaks off that or just leave it as it is because if you look we take two off one each on a plate medium rare absolutely perfect put those to one side a minute right then what I like to call the road map you can see there's a seam there so just go in again always with the point of the knife and you will actually join the thigh bone in there you'll see it in a minute starting to appear you can just invert your knife a little bit hardly any cutting involved nice and steady take your time as you can see there now just through the patella which is the kneecap there and just with no pressure begin to cut and you'll come to that seam that leaves you one little thick flank or knuckle and then our silver side and our top side attached so I'll show you that again you can literally see where we're going so just stretch it tip of the knife and you'll come right onto that thigh bone again repeating the process through that kneecap and then no pressure look I'm just riding the knife over that till it finds that natural seam which is there if you look at it and we go through again take that off it's one of the hardest bones on the carcass now just take out that femur again with the tip of your knife and that leaves those two subprimals together the top side and the silver side so again you can put some strings around that or some poultry bands perfect for stuff like this you've got yourself a nice roasting joint nice and steady so where it sits together the haunches that little bit of silver skin invert the knife and just nice and gentle with the knife pointing up just take that off and what I'm going to do here move them out of the way so I'm going to square those up all with squaring stuff up take off that silver skin of the silver side there nice and simple and then about a thumb thickness go through take yourself off some steaks like I said it's entirely up to you if you eat more steaks steak it if you eat more roasts obviously roast it but I love a venison steak who doesn't 
Let's give that a fettle there. Again, to the pile. And we'll repeat with the other side. Take it off. Always squaring off. A little sharpen. Nice ring on that. And again, about a thumb thickness. We work our way through. Get three good ones. And maybe a fourth little dinky one. So off that haunch, or that pair of haunches then, we've got eight nice steaks. And remember earlier, I was saying about those rumps, you can leave it whole. If not, take one good steak off, just like that. You can add that to our pile. And repeat with the other side so one nice thick one so there we have off those two little haunches ten lovely little steaks right they can go over there so onto these little thick flanks then you could if you wanted to roast these but they are absolutely tiny what I'm going to do is just take that flap off. Now, if this was a bigger species, they would be a decent size. So you've got to think to yourself, do I want to go to the hassle of cooking these like this? Or do we put it into something easier? I'll just show you school of thought. You can split it down the middle. And that will give you four steaks. But I'll, what I most probably will do is put that to dice and stew. Beautiful looking meat though. So next up then, the final subprimal is this lovely saddle. So we got the infamous back strap, the loin fillet going into the neck. And what I like to do is just cut that neck off there. Now there are fillets in the neck, but they are going to be just slightly tougher. Through. Oh, cut. But again, I'm looking to this for my burgers and sausages. So again, a slash job literally here is get it off the bone. It's quite tough. Whatever we can take off this. There's that paddy whack appearing, that muscle that keeps the head up. So yeah, don't be too fussy here. Just get all the meat off the bone. Doesn't look pretty. It ain't pretty. <laughs> There's one. Of the neck fillets just going down that following the vertebrae so there's a couple of ribs there holding the meat with your one hand just work down it not a lot on this 
and then we just go over and just clean up the bone that blood meat we don't want that in our trim so that could go to your dogs but pretty much not the prettiest butchery but needs must it's only going to be mince so no need to get fancy and that gives us these lovely slabs of meat so there's a couple of them neck fillets again I'm just gonna dice mine if it was on a bigger species I know I keep saying that maybe would use them for something else curries absolutely ideal for curries get rid of that and that goes in our ever-growing trim pile. So on to the star of the show. So what I want to do then is I want to take these, what are the breasts off. Always tricky with Muntjac sawing because it hasn't got a lot of integrity. As you can see, there's no covering over those ribs. So it can be quite difficult. So just take your time and the reason we do this it will make it easier to get that backstrop off it'll be cleaner so you can use poultry shears or some tin snips but basically we're just cutting it off so we can lay it nice and flat So we're just guessing. And that will lay nice and flat for us. So I shall bring the camera down and we can have a good look at how we remove those. Perfect. So looking on the top of that saddle then, obviously the backbone, spine, the vertebra runs through the middle. You can pretty much see it. So just get your knife tip in to start it. And basically what we're doing, we're gonna go either side, keeping your knife nice and close to the bone, all the way along the length. Just like that, nice and simple. So from neck end to the leg end, just releasing it. Now there is a ridge as you come down over the ridge and just gently begin to cut it away. As you can see, I've got no pressure on the knife here whatsoever. And as we get to that rib part, again, just working it over. Now always turn the meat to you. Don't get dancing around the meat. Turn the meat where it's comfortable for you. As you can see, I'm just going over the last of those ribs. Now I have got the whole of that backstrap there. So all that's safe. So basically just continue that. That gives us that beauty. Now what we do is repeat it with the other side. So start here, only because you can see it. And then, again, if you look at my knife, I'm just using the tip, but it's angled towards the bone, so I'm not cutting into the meat. A lovely sound so over those ribs spin it round now we can go find that ridge there as you can see physically 
worked over it. We go to those feather bones there. And it's coming away nice and easy. Just continue that cut down. And like with the other one, once you've got that back strap nice and safe, continue the cut. And we're left with this beautiful thing. Really simple. So, tear off the skin. Be gentle here because it, it tends to stick. So you might want to help it along. Who doesn't love a bit of this? So, if you can see there, there's some silver skin. So, just get your knife in and cut that off. Now, the good bit. I think two good portions. So what I like to do is cut. There's no pressure on that. Turn the blade, nice sharp blade, and just work it along as if you were skinning a fish. There's number one. And repeat with number two. Nice and gentle. Now we can have a look what we got. Square it off. Now you'll see there, because that was off the neck end, there is a little bit of silver skin. So what we do, we just trace that down. Just like that. That gives us two lovely, lovely back straps. One of my favourites. Who doesn't love that? So I'll show you that skinning again with the other side. So knife in, no pressure. Horizontal, wiggle it. It's that simple. Works every single time. And again, start it. That gives us those lovely, lovely back straps. Again, like before, because we went into the neck, we got that bit. Now, the reason I'm taking that off is because it will. Be a little bit tough will also curl up as you cook it so yeah four lovely loin fillets back straps whatever you want to call them so before we go through our pile you can work through the ribs by going down one and up the other. Nice and gentle if you want to. Life may be too short, but it's all trim. It's an extra burger. It's an extra sausage. So why not? By the magic of video, that's done. So onto those breasts I took off then, waffle thin, waffle thin. It's just a case of your knife, almost horizontal, just cutting it away, and with your hand. Again, don't be too fussy. It's only going through the mincer, so whatever you can get off. where the stomach was split so it's dry so we'll take that off add to the pile repeat with the other one very therapeutic
nice and simple. Right then, let's get on with sorting our trim. Okay then, let's have a look what we got. I think we'll put our bowl there. Now, I get asked this a lot, how do you know what's trim? Basically mince, what do you know what to dice? So it's quite simple, the rule. Use your eye. If it looks big enough to get a cube of meat off, so example, those muscles we took off the shoulders, we square that up, put that in there, and we split that. And you think, right, yeah, easily get some cubes out of that. And the beauty of doing this is you can get some perfect cubes because you can cut, say, two off there, put the trim for your mince, and you'll get lovely, lovely diced venison. All same size or cooks at the same time so those shins then now they can be a bit sinewy on the outside so just like we did those back straps just get your knife under so here's the trim from that rump again Nice cubes. What have we got here? I think that's off the uh, haunch. So that shin again. If you can see on the outside, it can be quite tough, dry. Just skin it. Another bit of that rump. Again, the shoulder muscle. Just have a look at it. I think, yeah, that'll do. In half, take one off there. And that's it, really. That's as simple as it is. Just work through it. Whatever you think will make a nice cube, cube. So that's that thick flank. We took off the haunch. So take that off. We just know we're going to get some nice cubes out of that. It's growing nicely, the pile. And then I'll put all the trim through the mincer. And then we'll put it all together and we'll see what our little 16 pound Munty has yielded. Bearing in mind, like I said, an invasive species everywhere. We're doing the environment a favour, but with a little time, watch this video, take your time. Don't worry about the process. You'll be able to get a good few meals for your family. Final bit. So there we have our cubed diced venison. And there we have our trim to go through the mincer. I'm going to do that. I'll come back. We'll put it all together. So this is always my favourite part of any video I do, is we start off with a carcass. Here was that £16 little Munty, and we went through the process so we can see what we've achieved. It's quite impressive when you realise how big it was to start with, but I'm going to bring the camera down and we can have a good look at all these various beautiful cuts. Okay then, exactly what have we achieved from that little thing? Well, we got those two wonderful rump steaks. 
eight haunch steaks, spankingly fresh offal. Look at that wonderful liver, heart, two kidneys. We got those two little tenderloins, those fillet steaks. Of course, the star of the show. Who doesn't like them? Backstrap loin fillet. Basically, the sirloin of the deer. Moving along, we have our beautiful diced cubed. Just think of the casseroles, curry, stews you could do with that. Then, of course, a lovely tray of venison mince. We eat a lot of venison mince. I do a lot of ragus, a lot of pies. I mean, at the end of the day, out of that little munt jack, there is quite a few meals here. And it's easy to do. You can do it. So my final job then is to get all this portioned up and bagged up and get it in the freezer. All these lovely meals to look forward to. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and do give it a go. Just remember, take your time, don't panic, don't worry, and you too can achieve this. I've been Scott Ree. Thank you for watching. Take care.